Lindsay Murray. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I upload a very girly girl, bougie on a budget, lifestyle, chronic illness type content here on YouTube. So if you're new, you should totally stop what you're doing and subscribe to join the family. And don't forget to turn on that bell so that you know whenever I upload. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking, talking all about some chronic illness, disability, life hacks, things that I've found helpful. I don't want to call it life hacks, but these are just tools and things that I've done or do to help myself uh, better live my life with chronic illness. So these are like my essentials, my life hacks, like this is just some of the stuff that I do to help mitigate my disability and my life with chronic illness. So I wanted to share with you all some of the stuff that I do, some of the stuff I've seen other people do, and yeah, just give you all some things that you could maybe try to see if it helps you personally. Chronic illness is different for everybody and it's important to figure out what works for you individually because it, like I said, it's different for everyone and everyone is affected differently and even people who have the same illnesses can be affected completely differently by the disease. I am not a doctor. Uh, I cannot diagnose anyone. I am just simply sharing my experience and trying to help other people out there feel less alone and to just raise awareness for my conditions and my illness. So let's just get right on into this. So the first thing <laughs> actually probably saved my life uh, <laughs> when I had a seizure in the mall when I was alone and that is the medical ID on your phone. So you do this on your phone, you can see a medical ID and then it pops up and there's a bunch of information on it. So basically it has all of my medical conditions, so POTS, complex partial seizures, superior mesenteric artery syndrome, cyclic vomiting and gastroparesis. It says, talks about my anxiety, my depression, uh, panic attacks, um, my allergies to adhesive tape, Reglan and Haldol, and then all of my medications, uh, my language, it has a picture of me, my birthday, um, says that I'm an organ donor, etc. But anyway, filling out your medical ID is super, super important. If you have a, an iPhone, definitely do this. I don't know if there's an Android feature for this. I am not educated on that because I do not have an Android. I'm not sure. But I have seen people put their medical information in like a notes app or a photo editing app and then make that their background so that in case of an emergency, someone could look at their phone and see their background and have their like medical information so that they understand you have a medical emergency. But any way that you can convey that message in case of an emergency is something that you should totally take advantage of and do, which kind of goes along with my next like tip, hack, whatever you want to call it. Um, get a medical alert, something. If you have a condition where you could potentially have episodes publicly, um, especially if you are alone, uh, definitely get some form of identification, like whether you're a diabetic or whether you have POTS and you experience syncope or um, you experience seizures. <laughs> um, if you experience anything where you could have an episode at any time, no matter where you are, um, regardless of if you're alone or not, it's important to have some kind of way that health professionals and or people around you can help you when you're having the episode. So if people know what you have, they, you have, they can more better, they can call, still call for help and um, better know how to help you. But um, yeah, so take advantage of your medical ID as well as get a medical alert necklace. They have bracelets, check out Etsy. They have so many to choose from. This one was rose gold and really pretty, but as you can see, it's very tarnished. You can't even read the back anymore. I still wear it just for comfort, but I ordered a new one on Etsy for like seven bucks. That's aluminum and it's like an OG dog tag style. So you will be seeing me wear that as soon as I get that in the mail um, because this one is just very worn and tarnished and it's not really useful anymore, but uh, yeah. So just having some form of identification for your medical condition um, and whether you have like rescue medication or like a number to call in case of an emergency, like that's where it's helpful to have the medical identification either on your phone or on your background or on you somewhere physically through a necklace or a bracelet or something like that. So the next thing is a pill organizer because I don't know about you all, I know some people do the more homeopathic, I think that's the word, um, like natural root. Uh, I've tried that, it used to work for me, like just increasing my salt, fluids, exercise, like um, it, that used to work for me, but I have gotten two more mild concussions since 
the four years that I've have been dealing with POTS. I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh my god, brain fog. <laughs> but yes, a pill organizer is great because if you do have a lot of medications like I do, I have lots of medications and I have medications at three different times throughout the day. So I have to take medications at certain times or I'm supposed to. One tip is to set reminders on your phone or get an app on your phone that can either like remind you of your medications if you're someone like me and you tend to forget or get busy and just forget to do it or take your meds you can set alarms or reminders or get an app that to help you manage when you have to take your meds there's apps to do everything nowadays to monitor your water intake to monitor your medicine like there's apps for everything <laughs> so um, check out the app store and see if there's any apps that could help you potentially with whether it's like with memorizing stuff or like a to-do list or a calendar or something I don't know but a uh, pill organizer is very helpful because it just keeps your stuff organized and you don't have to like get out the bottles you can just do it all at once and then have all of your week's worth of medication ready and it just saves so much time you just grab the one you pop it open for the time of day you take your meds and you're done and then you just go right back to it throughout the day and then you go to the next one and it's just very super easy convenient saves a lot of time and my mom personally does my medications for personal reasons but uh, la, 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 pill organizers are great because <laughs> They're nice to help you stay organized, especially if you have a foggy brain like me. So the next thing is to use notes on your phone, sticky notes, whatever it takes to remind you to do things. So this kind of goes along with the brain fog. Um, I tend to forget things sometimes. <laughs> uh, so a lot of times I will make notes on my phone about either things I want to remember or things that I wanted to do. Um, I will make notes uh, so that I can stay organized. Yeah, or if you think of something and you write it out on a sticky note, like just sticking it somewhere where you're gonna see it and remember to do that, that can also be a very helpful visual reminder, especially if you tend to forget things like me because of brain fog. There's no shame in it. Brain fog happens, you know? <laughs> and you just gotta do your best. You know, that's all you can do. But making little notes on your phone and on little sticky notes can be very helpful too help you remember little things that you need to get done or that you have to do. So the next thing is to meal prep or have like easy microwavable meals. Sometimes with chronic illness, especially if you're living alone, it can be very hard to have the energy to make food. And so I know me for sometimes, well, obviously what I'm allowed to eat right now is very limited before. So I would miss a meal sometimes because I just did not have the energy to just like make anything or do anything. So having quick meals that are like already prepared, already ready to go, you can literally stick, throw it in the microwave and eat it and then be on the go. Um, having something that you can just throw in the microwave and prepare, not always the healthiest option, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And sometimes just having meals already prepared um, where you don't have to think about it and you don't have to cook it and you don't have to spend the extra time on it it's very helpful and it saves a lot of energy and a lot of spoons for my spoonies out there so <laughs> sometimes if you are able to meal prep or get someone to help you meal prep or meal prep for you the next thing is to carry a medical bag with all of your essentials and and or like carry around like a little bit emergency meds basically if you have meds that our emergency meds like I always carry around salt tabs I always have basic like ibuprofen Tylenol I have my bentol for my spasms I have my anxiety medication I have nausea medicine always on board uh, I have different other like nausea remedies like I have c-bands that wrap around my wrists and push on a pressure point to help with nausea um, just have a bag of like little like it doesn't have to be a big bag it can be a little bag but I have a little pill container that has like all my like rescue meds in it and I put it in every bag every, every single time I go out or go somewhere I make sure I always have that because if I start to have a spasm and I don't have my medicine to get it under control then I will be in a lot of pain and it could potentially cause a flare so it, so if you are someone where it is important that when you need meds you have to have meds on you make sure you have those meds on board and have like a little container where you always know that they're gonna be there um, <laughs> and you're not gonna forget it uh, so make sure that you always have that so the next thing is to have your medications and diagnoses or like information typed out and listed on a document so this is helpful for doctor's appointments because a lot of times you have to fill out those preforms where 
where they ask about your history and all this stuff. So it's really easy if you have all the information in one place and you can fill in the blank and or um, just hand them your medication list so that they can see all the medications that you're on and put it, put it in. I just find it to be super helpful because every doc new doctor that I go to always asks what medications you're on. So if you have a list already typed up and ready to go, you can literally just hand it to them if you want it printed out. Otherwise, I typically just pull up my medical ID and hand them my phone and they type it in and then hand me my phone back. So if you are someone with a pick line and you can't get your pick line wet, a life hack is to get a shower cover. They sell them on Amazon. They sell them on Karenware. Uh, they sell them online anywhere, uh, but they're basically little things that you can slide on over your arm to protect your pick line from getting wet when you are in the shower. It's a lot easier than trying to like put duct tape and plastic bags and trust me, I've done it in the hospital before with an IV, gotten it all wrapped up with like plastic and tape and stuff. Uh, but having a shower cover for your pick line is super, 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 super helpful. Saves so much time. I literally just put a, my sleeve on top of my pick and then I will put the shower cover on top. Um, another shower related hack is to use a shower chair if you have a hard time standing in hot situations like me. Uh, a lot of people with pots are heat intolerant and have a hard time in very hot situations and are at a higher likelihood of fainting um, or having blood pooling or just like not circulating properly. Hot situations are just a little bit more dangerous for someone with POTS. So um, having a shower chair can help minimize risk of passing out in the shower if you're already sitting while you're like doing your shower routine. It's definitely helped me a lot. Shower chair, very helpful. Highly recommend for fellow spoonies if you have a hard time sitting in the shower like I do. Have a designated hospital bag. So if you are someone like me where hospitalizations can be very unexpected and happen very quickly uh, or can just happen out of the blue, it is helpful if you have a bag that is already packed or very easily packed. Like if you have your essential that you know that you need um, because typically when I'm in an episode I can't pack a, a bag I can barely walk it's nice if you have a bag that's already ready to go and you can just throw everything in there and go because it saves a lot of time because I know that when I need to go to the hospital I need to go to the hospital or I will have a seizure so it can be very helpful if you have a bag packed at your ease or convenience it can be helpful even if you're going somewhere like you're running out and you want to have stuff with you like it can be helpful for that too, but if you are someone like me who has a lot of hospitalizations, then having a little bag packed and ready to go at all times can be very helpful and save a lot of time when you're not feeling good at all and when you really need to go to the hospital. The next thing is that heating pads and ice packs are great. Those are great ways to help to manage pain. I use a uh, heating pad a lot on my stomach to help with manage my stomach pain as well as my back pain, neck pain. I get pain pretty much everywhere from my pots. Uh, ice packs and heat packs can be very, very helpful and um, I just recommend any person with chronic illness to have it. Even if your temperature is off and you're uncomfortable, like if you're really cold, you can throw on a heating pad and sometimes that can like give you the warmth that you need or something like that. So yes, and water always. I feel like it can never hurt to have water. Always stay hydrated, always have water on you, especially if you're a spoonie. Um, water is so, so, so important to stay hydrated. And the last tip is to have comfy clothing that is functional and easy to wear so this are our clothes that you can wear in the hospital like sweatpants or a big t-shirt um just having those comfy clothes having comfy clothes is just important period like regardless of if you have chronic illness or not comfy clothes is an essential for sure but um it's nice to have certain comfy clothes because I know me like especially when I'm bloating really bad for my gastroparesis the last thing I want to do is being like something tight against my stomach and that's when I would like pull out the sweatpants or something like definitely have your comfy clothes that you can wear that you're very comfortable in when you are not feeling debashed and have comfy clothes period because why would you not have comfy clothes <laughs> All right, everyone, well, that is it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you found it helpful. Uh, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Comment below any video requests and don't forget to stop what you're doing and subscribe to Twin Femory. I will see you all in the next video. Love you, bye. Mwah.